Joining us now to talk about all things masks when it comes to preventing coronavirus, Dr. Dean Winslow. He's an infectious disease specialist with Stanford. Thanks for joining us, doctor. Well, thank you for having me. Let's start off with the new national standards that have just been unveiled for masks. What are we looking at? Yeah, so, you know, again, uh, I think it's a real uh, positive thing. Uh, it, the a ASTM, uh, the American uh, Society for uh, Testing the Materials, you know, has this proud history going back more than 120 years when they developed uh, uh, standards for uh, uh, the strength of rail, of steel rather, used in uh, rails uh, for railroads. And uh, again, apparently they have more than 12,000 standards that look at all kinds of, of uh, materials that we probably take for granted every day. So again, having a, an ASTM standard for uh, masks is I think very, very uh, positive. And what are the standards? Yeah, so, you know, again, I'm sure, you know, they're very technical, but they have to do with the sort of the tightness of the weave of the material and uh, the durability of the material and that sort of thing. And uh, from what I was able to find that uh, basically these masks have to demonstrate uh, at least uh, some degree of efficiency in, in uh, filtering out uh, small particle aerosols, which uh, we now realize is probably the major way that uh, the virus is transmitted uh, indoors. So, of course, we've heard all along that these N95 masks are the uh, most efficient way to be able to stop coronavirus from spreading. Not always the most practical, though, when it comes to cost and availability, frankly. Do these standards give us other options? They, they absolutely do. And one thing, you know, that I always point out is someone, you know, who has to wear an N95 mask uh, uh, during the day when I see patients with COVID is just that they are incredibly uh, uncomfortable. And uh, it's really, in my opinion, not very practical to, uh, you know, wear one all day long. Um, again, uh, I can't wait to get out of the patient's room and be able just to put my regular procedure mask on. Uh, but again, uh, the uh, uh, ASTM standards, I think, should really give Americans uh, a big degree of comfort that the uh, particularly cloth masks that they may be wearing, uh, you know, meet these standards and will work. Okay, so what, what are the minimums when it comes to fit for what is going to be a workable mask? I know you mentioned the N95s being uncomfortable. To me, that's one of the most uncomfortable things is that it's just so very tight, but that's something you kind of need in a mask. Yeah, exactly. And uh, the, one of the nice things, though, about uh, at least, uh, you know, many of the cloth masks that I've seen that, you know, hopefully very soon will be meeting these standards is, is that they actually uh, form fit to the face um, very, very well. And uh, one of the reasons that the CDC, I think, uh, recently came out uh, with their uh, recommendations for people to consider wearing two masks, that is a, a cloth mask over top of, let's say, a disposable surgical procedure mask is what that does is that it just ensures a much uh, tighter fit. Uh, you know, I know for a fact that sometimes when I wear just a plain surgical procedure mask, if I don't have particularly the bridge over the nose, um, you know, secured real tightly, my uh, glasses will fog up, you know, so I know for a fact that, you know, I don't have a really good seal. And so what, uh, again, wearing a uh, just a snugly fitting, but not uncomfortable cloth mask is uh, uh, really helps uh, take care of that potential problem. Well, that's one of the complaints that a lot of people have about wearing masks is the glasses fogging up, either your normal glasses or your sunglasses. So you're saying that should be a hint that you should get a different mask. Absolutely, or, or adjust the fit, uh, fit of it. Uh, so again, I think these uh, ASTM standards uh, really go a long way towards, uh, towards doing that. Okay, very good. We uh, know about the N95s and now hearing about these KN95s, that is uh, a more easily, easy, it's easier to get the KN95s online. What's the difference? Yeah, so the, my understanding is the KN95 masks don't necessarily pass quite the high uh, rigorous standards that the N95 masks do in terms of uh, being able to filter out uh, small particles. However, I think most of them are still, uh, you know, pretty good masks. If you do enough research to make sure that they're sourced from a reputable uh, source. I think that's one of the keys is one of the concerns has been is that some of the uh, commercially available KN95 masks may not meet those standards. So again, I think it behooves people to do a little bit of research and look at, you know, what sources are uh, recommended and approved.
Yeah, is there any other way to tell if, if it's the real deal? Yeah, I think again, you know, most of us don't have, you know, the technical equipment to actually, you know, look at the efficiency of the mask per se. But I think, you know, getting an N95 or a KN95 mask or even uh, one of the reusable cloth masks, which is really what I recommend, you know, for people to wear outside of, you know, say a hospital setting. Um, you know, they definitely get one that, uh, you know, has the, uh, the ASTM uh, standards label on it. I think this is just a, a wonderful, um, uh, you know, bit of progress right now. Okay, so that will be, will companies be forced to follow these standards or will they just sort of have the, uh, the, the badge of honor of having the label that they've, they've gone ahead and, and, and for, uh, used them themselves? Yeah, it's a little unclear to me, but you know, my sense is, is that uh, th this is a voluntary standard as you know, it, it generally is uh, for most other products. Uh, but again, it's th sort of like the underwriters laboratory label, you know, that goes on to uh, a lot of electronic devices. It, I think it really though does and should, you know, give uh, the American uh, public uh, at least some degree of certainty that uh, they're getting a product that'll uh, do what it's supposed to do. Um, so again, I think it would be a competitive advantage, certainly for companies to uh, uh, have, uh, you know, ASTM H, um, or rather ASTM uh, uh, label basically on their product that it meets those standards. So if a customer, consumer was, was looking for something like that, it would be positive reinforcement, at least for the company, that that is something that would make their product more marketable. Yeah, yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Now, when it comes to disposable masks, what should we be looking for right now? And how long can we use these things? Yeah, so, you know, a great question. Uh, you know, I, I just uh, personally, you know, take for granted that the hospital, uh, you know, where I work at Stanford is, you know, is buying uh, uh, approved uh, uh, surgical procedure masks. Uh, but uh, again, I think uh, the, the, the answer about how long you can safely use a mask is, probably variable depending on what you're doing. Uh, and I think certainly you could, if you're not uh, you know, actively exercising or sweating or somehow soiling the mask, you could probably use uh, you know, a well-fitting disposable mask for a couple of days. Uh, but um, you know, most of us generally swap them out you know, after, a, after a day. Now, when you talk about you know, sweating or makeup or whatever we have on it, uh, that would be, I suppose, unsanitary to continue to wear the same mask. But coronavirus wise, is, is it something where the virus could be trapped in the mask at some point that you would need to jettison it? Well, I wouldn't worry about that as much. Uh, but again, the concern would be that if the, if, if the uh, mask uh, is, is uh, basically blocked up, is that essentially what happens then is that the air would exhale around, uh, uh, the, around the mask outside, I think that would be the major concern. And of course, you know, we also know though that the masks, in addition to protecting others uh, from infection or from uh, us generating aerosols containing virus, if we happen to be infected and not have symptoms, is that we do really know now there's good data to support uh, the fact that the masks provide uh, a, a moderate to large degree of protection for the wearer as well. Uh, so again, I think that's another reason just to emphasize that uh, you, you should have a well-fitting mask on. And uh, again, if it's a disposable mask, you know, certainly, you know, swapping it out if it, uh, uh, you know, is looking a little tired. Okay, good advice, since it sounds like we're probably going to be wearing masks for what, another year? Is that what we're looking at here? Some people are predicting that. And uh, again, it's, uh, um, you know, a little bit of a pain to do, but uh, I think it's probably the most important thing that we're doing to reduce the transmission of the virus uh, in addition to, of course, immunizing our population uh, with the vaccine uh, against COVID-19. So uh, my mind, those are the two most important things. And then just the third bit of unsolicited advice is that unfortunately, you know, uh, doing, uh, going to or attending crowded indoor events, you know, such as indoor dining and uh, bars and concerts and all the things that most of us absolutely love doing, unfortunately, those are gonna still remain pretty high risk activities for the foreseeable future. So, uh, you know, this I think is the, the new normal at least for the next uh, several months. Okay, Dr. Dean Winslow with Stanford Healthcare. Thanks for all your insight. Thank you. Thanks for the good work you're doing.